a bratty bulldog whose good looks have gone to his head. Can pet trainer 911 put him in his place? What in the world are these canines doing behind bars? They're giving inmates a whole new outlook. Plus, how to avoid old mistakes with your new puppy. This time on Animal Attractions. Welcome to Animal Attractions, the show about the deep affection people have for their pets. I'm Megan Blake, and this is Whiskers. Today, we're not only going to learn how to avoid big mistakes with new puppies, but we're also going behind bars to see how prison puppies are changing lives. But first, we're going to meet Deuce, a bulldog with a spoiled, rotten attitude. He's determined to do anything he wants, and his owner says enough is enough. It's a job for Pet Trainer 911. Deuce, Deuce, Deuce. The cutest puppy the Petersons had ever seen. I love Deuce, I just adore him. Every time he looks at me, my face just melts. Unfortunately, he used those irresistible great looks to get his way his entire puppy life. Now that he's reached manhood, he's a spoiled little monster. He jumps on everyone, knocks over the kids, and the family is sick of these bad behaviors. Deuce gets birthday parties. Birthday cake time, come on. Oh, Happy birthday. Deuce gets um, shirts made with his name on them, collars with his name. Deuce is a very, very spoiled dog. My husband is a professional football player, and Mike is on the road a lot, so um, most of the time I'm here by myself. So Deuce is basically my companion and the, the protector of our house. The problem is, is that Deuce tends to not listen to me. He gets very stubborn, and he thinks that he is the boss in this relationship. Deuce is very much um, the alpha dog around other dogs, so he thinks that he can bully me around as well. So there's a constant tug of war between us. We'll be walking and he will just take off in one direction and I'm walking in the other. And neighbors have had to bring him home. And when we're having dinner, he'll come to the table and he'll beg, he'll put his head on your, on your knee, or he'll cry, or he'll bark. Or even if you get away, um, if you get up to go get something to drink, he'll come and put his head on the table to try to take the food away from you. Nope. Deuce is very, very strong. I cannot pull him. Once he plants himself and he decides that he's gonna stay put, he's staying put. Deuce, come use the bathroom. When he doesn't get his way, he'll push you. He very much likes to be the center of attention with everyone that comes into the house. If someone else is having a conversation with me or I'm playing with a baby or another puppy, he gets very jealous and he has to have all of my attention. Hey, I gotta get you trained. I gotta get you trained. You are too bad. I knew that Deuce would be very stubborn and I knew that I would have to find someone that was very qualified and that had patience in dealing with a caliber of dog like Deuce. A lady named Miss Pete called me and said she had an English Bulldog. And she asked me, have I ever worked with an English Bulldog? And uh, I told her yes and you know, I trained any kind of dog. She told me what he was doing and uh, that he uh, would, wouldn't listen to her. Hi. How you doing, Ronald White? Chantal Pierce. Nice, nice to meet you. Of course, she told me she didn't have any kids, and this was her kid, this deuce. And if you've seen that face on him, he, he almost got to me when I got there. This is Deuce. Oh, okay. But he gave you that that sad look, and his teeth were hanging out of his mouth, and uh, he was kind of funny, but he was also lovable. He's getting out of hand and we just really don't know what to do with him anymore. We really need your help. We're gonna take your dog for 30 days 
and then when I come back to train you, I got seven days. I get days. to call him, right? I you get, get to twice. You get to call me twice. Okay. And when I come back, he is my son. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on. Bye, Deuce. Okay, come on. It was miserable while he was gone, even though he had all of these bad behaviors. He is a part of our family, and he is basically my baby for right now. When they got the dog, they said that when he was little, he walked off into the pool, and the husband heard a thump in the water, and it was him, and he jumped in there and got him, and he gave the little deuce mouth to mouth resuscitation to the dog, brought him back, and uh, now he follows him everywhere. But Deuce is a, is a spoiled brat, so that's why he don't feel like he has to listen. What are you doing, buddy? Huh? What are you doing, huh? Are you doing? So when I get back to the house, you know, I got to like that little uh, English bulldog. So we got to know each other, and four or five days went by, and I knew I couldn't work him like a regular dog because he was not only short and stubby, and, you know, he had weight on him. They don't work long. They couldn't be out there an hour. So I worked him 15 minutes at a time, let him rest for about an hour, then got him back up and worked him again. So I had to take my time with Deuce. So when I, would, when I started with Deuce training him, uh, I was taking him through his set downstairs, and he had a problem with leaning on you. He would lean on you. So I would take my left knee and I would just push him over, but I would let him hear me tell him off. Off. Well, with that look, them big old eyes and them teeth hanging out of his mouth, and he was looking, he was a cute dog. He was just something about his face. So I would uh, work him, he would look at me, and I would start laughing. So uh, I had to work on my look with Deuce. Come here. And in the house, Deuce had to learn how to go to his own bed. Because she would actually pick him up to put him in her bed. Time out. Time out. So we taught Deuce how to go to his own bed. We tell him time out, he would go to his bed. Now when I first started with Deuce, he didn't want to go. So I had to push him in there and show him. And I called him out to let him know that's his place for now on. She already told me he begs and whines. Yeah, he started begging for me, jumping in my lap trying to get my tater chips and wouldn't listen. So I slightly just pulled down and told him off. And he would get down, then he tried to get back up on me again, and I corrected him, told him off. But I didn't give him anything, and I didn't talk to him. And eventually, he knew not to come up in my lap when I was eating. But you can't feed him from your plate. So that's what starts begging, and that's what Miss Pete was doing. So when I got done with Deuce, and he was uh, sitting down and staying, I would tell him go to timeout. He was shaking when I told him to shake, and uh, I knew that he was ready to go home. So I called Miss Peter and asked if she's ready to be trained. I really, really missed Deuce. Just having him around, and most of the time, all he does is sleep. But just knowing that he's in the house is really important to us. Deuce! Deuce! Hi, Deuce! Hi, Deuce! Hi, Deuce! And she had to get past looking at that cute face of Deuce and that look he gives you. I'm going to train you. Okay. She had to get past that and show him that she is the dominant dog and the dog is going to listen to her. Tell him heel. Okay, heel. I'll turn back around say place. Place. Go ahead and start walking. Just keep walking. Say place. Place. Keep walking. Hand down to your side. Turn back toward me. Back toward me. Now once you say stop. Stop. There you go. Tell him down. Give him a little pull. Down. There you go. Now tell him stay. Stay. Stretch that lead out. Come towards me. There you go. In a matter of 30 days, Deuce was a changed dog. She was tickled to death to see him going to his timeout, sitting down and staying. She couldn't wait to tell her husband. Timeout. Timeout. He almost got to me, but I couldn't let him see the other side. I had to stay strong with Deuce. And Mrs. Peterson's going to have to stay strong with Deuce and don't let him win with that look that he gives you. <laughs> oh, he did real good. Hey, and this is the last fun. day, and uh, you gave me a list, and now I'm going to give you one of his commands. Okay. And that will keep 
the dog trained in you. Oh, uh, Mr. White, I tell you, you are a miracle worker because Deuce is a changed dog. Miss Peterson is very happy. Deuce is now a happier dog. I am just overjoyed that Deuce will now listen and do what he needs to do. Um, I have no worries about bringing kids into the house or about Deuce knowing um, his place or what he needs to do. Even though he was cute and oh, little and short, uh, he was getting away with a lot of stuff. I know that from going to Mr. White that I have a trained dog that listens and um, is friends with everybody. Many people believe that a trainer is only called then when a pet has developed a problem that needs to be solved. But since puppies don't come with any instruction manuals, a trainer can be extremely valuable in the early stages of your relationship. In many homes, a puppy is purchased for the kids who just aren't prepared to train a puppy. We did a lot of research on different breeds of dogs. Uh, since this is our first puppy, we wanted to get the right one for our family. Um, our girls are 10 and 12, so we thought they were old enough to care for a small a small dog. might be a little bit easier for them. One day my mom bought this book about how, how to own a Pomeranian, and I just went through it, and I just loved it, because before that I never heard of a Pomeranian. So cute. He just fits so perfectly with our family. No, he's so crazy. <laughs> Most of the bad behaviors puppies develop are actually because they think they're doing what we want. But the fact is, we're the ones teaching them the bad behaviors. <laughs> Today, we are joined by trainer and behavior specialist, Liz Teal, who is going to teach us how to avoid three big mistakes new puppy owners tend to make. Before she meets with a new client, Liz has them make a list of the things they like and dislike about their puppy. The first thing that I'm looking at, you say he's very, very playful. What are your favorite games to play with him? Mostly I love to have him chase me. I mean, he just has a whole bunch of energy in him, so he just wants to run, run, run. So when I look back behind me, he's like... One behavior that seems harmless and even fun is teaching your dog to play chase. But the fact is, it can be dangerous. We run all around, around the house. Yeah, we'll let him chase us. Yeah. I'll, like, we'll just go through the dining room and then through the kitchen, dining room, kitchen, dining room, kitchen. Then we'll start chasing him. He'll go everywhere. We're like, go run. Hey, where'd he go? Mm -hmm. Is it easy to catch him? No. <laughs> no. No, not at all. And then when you try and pick him up, what does he do? Runs away. <laughs> he runs away. So, what do you think you're teaching Jack? To run really, really fast. How to run really, really fast. You're teaching him how to run really, really fast away from you. A great way to develop a recall is playing a game of hide and seek. First, you let the puppy see the person to run to and say, go find. You keep doing that. The person he runs towards is the person who gives him the cookie. The puppy learns to love coming to people and getting rewarded for it. This teaches them to come to you even if he can't immediately see you. I see on 10 things that you don't like, the number one thing, he nibbles. What does that mean? Well, mostly our hands, like, yeah, our just fingers. like, just like kind of, not very hard, but. So that means that he's putting his teeth on your body. So we want to teach him appropriate ways to use his mouth. One of the most important things to teach your puppy is how to be handled. So you need to be able to touch all four paws and let him let you do it and think, that's an okay thing. One of the most important things to handle is his mouth because he needs to have his teeth brushed. And if he ever got anything caught in there, you'd be able to say, oh, let me help you out. I will take that out and not get bit. <sighs> Good puppy. Yes. Now to correct him on that, all I did was a sharp blow into his face. <sighs> Fooey. <sighs> Don't do that again. If he gets very mouthy, rather than having him chew on your finger, have him chew on this while you're looking in his ear. Anybody in there? Where is that ear? There's that ear. While you're working a puppy, make certain you give him something else to chew that's not you. What are you teaching your dog about where to go to the bathroom? He pees everywhere. He pees everywhere. Does he prefer the grass or the carpet? 
I thought he was trained when we first got him. We took him outside and he peed and we're like, oh, our dog's a genius. And we brought him in the house and he did it again. And if you hold him, he'll go along the way when you're trying to bring him out. He's peeing all the way out. And then he doesn't go outside. <laughs> Cause all of it's in here. <laughs> and we want him to only pee in one place. Part of that is by never giving him the opportunity to pee or poop on your carpet or floor. So we're gonna start by crate training him so he's got his own room. But the moment he comes out of that, we're going to pick him up and carry him to where we want the bathroom to be. And when you say he goes on the carpet, that's what he feels under his paws. And so we need to teach him that what he feels under his paws is a place grass. you want him to go. Yeah. Which would be grass, or if you have a city puppy, cement. Good job. By starting early, they're avoiding basic problems that many people think are automatic with new puppies. They are keeping this puppy safe and they are building a lasting relationship with their children and their dog. So remember boys and girls and moms and dads, puppies don't come trained, so it's up to you to teach them the basics and how to be the puppy you want them to be. And if you need help, a trainer like Liz is just a phone call away. Deified for centuries in the Far East, and more recently in the movie Lady and the Tramp, Siamese cats still exhibit a royal manner and will end up ruling any roost they set up in. While she may condescend to play with you, it will be her choice, not yours and she will allow you to groom her frequently. I wanted to introduce you to Emily today. She's my Seal Point Siamese and tell you a little bit about the breed in general. Um, she's a Seal Point, meaning that her, her ears are gonna be the darkest. Almost some of them tend to be black. From the tip of the nose to the ears, it should flare out and pretty much make a triangle. And the eye color they get um, is very important too. A Siamese has to have blue eyes for it to be registered. They have long limbs and fine boning. Fine boning means that when, when you pick them up and you hold their hand, it's gonna be like holding a child's hand. They have little tiny feet, little oval feet. A tight body and a short coat. Their tail should be very long and whippy, no kinks. You have to forgive her right now, she's the mother of eight and they're only seven weeks old, so. <laughs> All the kittens are born this white and then their, their color points do fill in. Now I'm gonna show you compare for you um, a seal point at seven weeks and a lilac point. Look at the nose pad. We got a black nose pad here and nice dark ears. And over here, we have a nice white body with deep blue eyes and the color still is just a hint on the nose pad and the ears. The playfulness that you see today, it continues throughout their entire lifespan. I and mean, you can find a 10 year old Siamese that's willing to fetch and play just as hard as a newborn kitten. So if you don't mind being subject to her will, the Siamese will reward you with all the affection she thinks you deserve. Today, there's so many good products on the market for controlling fleas and ticks that we're surprised when our pet has an infestation. However, nothing is 100%. There's a variety of methods that people use to control fleas and ticks. Bathing is one of them. Although bathing provides immediate relief from some of the itching associated with fleas, it has no lasting effect. So don't be surprised if just a couple days later, your pet has fleas again. Sprays and dips, although they're effective, can be pretty harsh on your pet. Spot on treatments are actually more effective, can last up to a month, and are much gentler on your pet. Spot-on treatments are applied by parting the fur at the back of the neck where your dog or cat can't reach it and applying the medication directly to the skin. Bathing can sometimes interfere with these spot-on treatments, so as a general rule, I would recommend not bathing your pet two days before or two days after application. Oral medications can work well too. Talk to your veterinarian about what's best for your pet's lifestyle and your area. There'll be a much different recommendation for Colorado versus Florida. Fleas tend to prefer moist, humid environments, whereas ticks can be found anywhere in a wooded area. Make sure you check your pets regularly, no matter where you live. 
Pay particular attention to the ears and between the toes, because this is a favorite place for ticks to hide. To locate fleas, part the fur on the back end of your pet and look for either the live fleas or what we call flea dirt. Flea dirt looks like little black specks of dirt, but when they get wet and rub between your fingers, they turn red. If you do find fleas, check with your vet to find the best way to eradicate the fleas from both your pet and your home environment. If you find a tick, you want to remove it right away. I've found that using a drop of alcohol on the tick before pulling it out may help loosen it up. Contrary to what you might have heard, you don't want to try to burn the tick with a hot match or try to twist it out. The best way to remove the tick is to use some fine tip tweezers and pull the tick directly out, trying to remove the head at the same time. Fleas and ticks cause a variety of problems, everything from infectious diseases to allergies. So be sure to use your flea and tick control on a regular basis, check your pet for fleas and ticks, and always consult with your veterinarian if you're having a problem. You've heard our stories about people rescuing dogs from prison-like shelters. Well, not in this story. Here, it's about puppies going behind bars and setting people free. Here, take a look. This is Lottie Correctional Facility in Florida, one of more than 65 U.S. prisons with programs allowing inmates to train future guide, law enforcement, and therapy dogs. Why so many? Because it works. Not only does it offer the, the, the comfort of a, a companion to see you through your time, but it also gives you an opportunity to better your life. Okay, well here they can learn skills and uh, so when they do leave, they can get a job on the outside because once they get to a certain time, they can go what they call work release. And, and if they already have these skills, they can already start working in that before they're actually totally released from the Department of Corrections. This program offers a college course, a veterinary assistance course, which someone that does not have an education or a background have that opportunity with this course to better themselves and have an opportunity, a business opportunity when they get out. Philip is one of our men who has taken the course and he has passed it with flying colors. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you so much. You did a great job. When the inmates get the puppies, the first thing that I'll see is this big, happy grin and this man hugging this little puppy to him, you know, and they don't want to let him go. Ah. Oh, look at that, huh? <laughs> Take the dog, Dad. Take the dog, You got inmates that have, have had some time, 10, 15 years, and they come here to Lottie, and when they see a dog and they are able to touch that dog, it just, it changes a man. Just like it did me, you know, it's just something just brings back, I guess, their youth or whatever, and just having them around just quiets people down, you know, and it, it brings a peace, around, you know, to, to these men. I think the biggest benefit is, is they learn to control their anger. And if they can control their anger, everything else will naturally come along with it. To, to pet a dog and just, you know, they light up, they change. They just seem to loosen up, and, and, and you can tell it. It just has that natural effect. Our ultimate goals are to work towards teaching the dog, number one, to bond to a human. Okay, let's do a right about. Uh, then to right, build right confidence up. in that dog that he is go or she is able to take on any of the challenges that he might meet in his life as a guide dog. We don't actually do any training as far as teaching the dog to guide somebody. That's done by professionals at the school. But our goal is to teach them how to walk properly on a leash, to learn basic obedience commands. Uh, then we also take and try to give them as many experiences as possible. I'll take them into the classrooms and I'll sit and I'll interact with another inmate. And then if we have any kind of programs, we'll take them in there so they get exposed to the clapping. And what you don't want is a dog to be distracted. Kennel in. Well, we'll start teaching them how to stop before the stairs and before doors. Bo, sit. Bo, sit. Good boy. To have them stay and stay before they go in. And um, we do a lot of hands-on, too, with other inmates to get them comfortable with other people. Because these dogs are, you know, they're going to be out in public and they can't be shy of other people. Jesse, stop, stand. 
Jesse Ford, good boy. When I see the dog doing what he's supposed to, it gives me a sense of accomplishment too, that what I'm doing is actually making a difference and what I'm doing is, is changing the dog, you know, and, and equipping him to be what he's called to be, a guide dog. Good boy. We do a lot of the grooming, cleaning their ears, making sure their nails are uh, clipped, and uh, just combing them out, getting them used to a brush, getting them used to the touch, their ears being clean. When I get a new man on the team, um, it's a whole new learning experience for that man. And to just watch that person change and his confidence build, he's getting unconditional love, which in some cases they've never had before. And there's a big difference between the time when they first start on the K-9 team here at Lottie to when they're actually finished and they're ready to leave and move on to something else. Their whole attitude has changed. Their whole opinion of themselves has changed. All of a sudden, they, they feel like they can do something, they can make a difference. The things that I took for granted out there, I, I look at it in a different light now, and I want to give back to the community, and that's what it's done for me. The inmates won't tell you directly, but their emotions will tell you how it affects them. It gives you that feeling inside that you've done something for somebody else out there, because this, this is not just affecting my life, this is affecting somebody's out, this is life out there that's less fortunate than I am. And uh, it gives them back their, their independence, and that, that's really what I'm in this program for.